Hey everybody, welcome back to part three of the beginner verse tutorial series. In this one, we are going to be collecting collectibles. And when we finish collecting all five collectibles, something's going to happen. And the way we're going to do this is actually with an array. Today we are covering arrays and maps. And we're going to keep track of players with a map. Now maps and arrays are very, very similar, but kind of different. And I want to show you the most common ways to use these things because this is probably what you're going to do in your own maps to make things easier and more organized. And you'll see once we get this last collectible, it respawns, that one's respawned, that one over there is respawned, that one over there is respawned, and that one over there is respawned. So let's learn how to do this because this is a very vital skill to learn when making games in Fortnite. I also wanna say thanks to everybody over on Patreon. Thanks for being there, you guys are absolute legends. As always, you make these things happen. All right, let's learn how to do all this. Okay, as usual, we are inside of UEFN now, and I have my game manager here. We've already learned how to make this. I'm not gonna cover that again. And we have all of our collectibles that are placed all over the place inside of this map. They're all slightly different just for a visual reference of what they are. They're all just collectibles. We have our two spawners here, which are important for this game because we need to be able to pay attention to the players. And we do that when these players spawn here. And we already covered that too, but let's go over the code now because this is pretty much all you need to do here other than of course hook up everything in your game manager but we're going to talk about this game manager as we go through the code okay so here we are inside of the code this is verse we've already covered how these are made if you don't remember how these are made then make sure to check back in the series part one and part two and in this one we have our game manager it's a creative device which is why there's a little computer that lives on the screen that we have to hook stuff up to now what we've created here is our players map and a player's map is a way to keep track of all our players. And we're going to make them what we have is called a custom player. So we're also going to be making a custom class, in this case, a custom player. A lot of people ask me how this is made in the tutorials. I cover it here and there. We're gonna go in detail now. So this is a map. A map is an associative array. If you have no idea what that means, then we first have to start talking about arrays. Now an array, if we look in the game manager here, we can come down and we can see, we can make an array by saying array and then these little squiggly brackets. And I've done this for the collectible objects, but I also have them all listed here as collectible objects. This is two different ways to do the same thing. So we all know this way of doing it where we make five editables and we put each coin uh, as a collectible object device inside of here. And then when we go to the game manager and we go into the details, we can see we have these gold, silver, plasma, cylinder, and music note collectible objects. And I've hooked them up with the editables right here. But I also have this collectible objects five array elements item here. If I open this up, it's the same items in here. This is two ways to do the same thing. You're not going to do both of these ways. You're going to do one or the other. And I highly recommend the second one, unless you have to do something that's a little more custom and you don't have sort of a generic call being made per collectible. But if you just need the same call being called, which you usually do, you can make an array. Okay, so back to the code. To make that happen, we're going to make an editable. We're going to call it collectible objects. You can call this whatever you want. Inside of there is this collectible object device. So when you use the editable, it'll be looking for one of those on the map. And we sort of instantiate that with the square bracket. This is how you make the array with the type next to it. And then you say, this is going to be an array. And this is how you make an array in a game. Now arrays are very useful. They're essentially just lists. And they're lists because you put a value inside of the array, like the editable, where it is just a thing that goes in there. It could be a lot of different things. It could be just a number, it can be a letter, it can be words, it can be devices, it can be custom devices, it can be players, it can be all kinds of things. But you have to specify the type that's going inside of this array here, and you can't put anything else in. So that's how that works. And then it's a list, so it's an ordered list and it starts at zero. In some languages, the array will start at one, in verse arrays start at an index of zero. And we'll talk about what indexes are in just a little bit. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit and we can see here we've got some old code in here. If you haven't seen the tutorial on the creatures, spawners, things, well, that's what this is for, but we're not gonna use that. I've just left them in here. I've also put a max collectibles int 
variable in here. We talked about variables last time, and that's five. So we know how many collectibles there are in the game, and that will allow us to make a comparison so that we can do a thing. Okay, so in our on begin, when our game or round starts, on begin runs, we want to hit say, hey, spawners, let us know when somebody spawns in. So we're going to subscribe to the spawned event. On player spawn is the function we're calling for that. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to listen to the collected event for each collectible item, and we're going to call on collectible collected. That's a function that we made, and this is how we're going to listen to that event. Now, I've also got this commented out bit of code here we're going to cover in just a second. This is going to talk about the array a little bit, but I just want to cover just the basics of why and how this works. On collectible collected gets an agent object. If we were to hold the control key down, click on this collected event item, we could see here in the fortnite.digest.verse file, it's going to show us the collectible object device and what's available for us. So we have the collectible event, which is a listenable, so we subscribe. We have show, we have hide, we have respawn, and respawn for all. We're going to use respawn for all, so let's keep this one in mind. Respawn is when you want to respawn the collectible object for just one agent. This is pretty much the only object that you can do this with, and you can't even make your own custom one. This is the only thing that we can do this with, where we can hide it from everybody else except one person. But we're not doing that in this game. We're going to do respawn for all so that everybody can see this rather than having to loop through all the players and call respawn, they put in this nice handy one. So we want the collected event. Back to the game manager. So we're going to call on collectible collected, passes in the agent, and we can see that if we look here. See, it says agent here. So that means it's going to pass in who collected the coin. So I put a little print in here because I like my print statements. Good logging. If player is in the player's map here, then we're going to add the collectible to the player and check to reset the collectibles passing in the player object, which brings us to the player's map. So we briefly talked about arrays. Let's talk about maps. Now, up here is where we've set that up. The player's map is a map. I've called it player's map. That's just my name. It is a map object. Now, a map object is an associative array. So an array is a list, but a map is a list of items that you can index with whatever you want to index with. In our case, we are going to index it with the agent object, which is a comparable object. It's a unique object. You can't have an index in here that is not going to be unique. Otherwise, you'll just overwrite the other. And you also can't find a thing in there because it's not going to be comparable. So you have to use a comparable object, an int, float, agent, player, you can use all kinds of things in here. And then the thing that's going to live in there, the value that's going to live in there is our custom player. So we're actually setting up two custom things that are going to link together in one object. And then we do that with a map. So that's an associative array. If you ever study any other language, that's what it's going to be called. And this is very, very useful because we want to not number our players. We want to be able to use the agent object. It's going to be very useful later. Trust me. And then we're going to pass in our custom player custom class. So let's take a look at that. We started this in the very first tutorial. Let's continue it on. A custom player class is just a way to hold a player's information in one place. So everybody becomes a custom player. They're just an instance of this class. And we do that when we spawn. So let's take a look at the spawn function on player spawn. Very, very short, very, very simple. Nothing to worry about here. This is easy stuff. So the first thing that happens when somebody spawns in is on player spawn gets called because we're listening to the spawned event on the spawners. If the player exists, we don't really want to do anything in this case. Some games you do, some you don't. This one we don't. And we're checking that by saying, hey, take this agent object that got passed in, pass it in as the index to the player's map. Because remember, we're saving the index not as a number, but as an object. And we can tell if this value exists, which is what we're doing here, colon equals allows us to define a type of variable. And if it exists, this will pass false if it doesn't exist. So if this player is not in this game, then we need to do something. If they are, they just say the player respond. 
because they're going to live in this thing until they leave. So if they don't live in there, then we're going to add them. And we do that with this line here. This new custom player is just a name that I've come up with. It gets chucked out later. And it's a of type custom player, which is our brand new class, which is here. And then we instantiate it with custom player and I'm passing in my agent object. That is a self-defined variable. I've defined that. We're passing in the agent that got passed in when the player spawns. Hopefully this isn't too confusing, but we are literally just making this class an instance of this class, which is just an object. Think of it like a box, just a box that everything kind of gets piled into. And on the front of it, you're going to write the word agent. And that agent is something that you understand. It has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So if you were moving your house and you wrote kitchen stuff or living room stuff, it's still going to be a thing in the house, right? It's still a room in the house. So we're going to pass in the agent by doing that right here. So set players map agent equals this thing here. And now this here is an instantiation of a value that lives in the custom player that we have to do here, which lives right here here because this top one, we have a unique ID. I always like to give my players an ID uh, int of zero. I've already not only instantiated the variable with an int, but I've given it a value by default. This one does not have a default value. Some people will put equals uh, question mark agent and that makes it an optional, but I prefer not to use it. Anyways, this is probably getting too far. I like this way because when I make my custom players, I just pass in the agent object from the get-go, and that's what allows me to do comparables and do all kinds of other stuff in here. It's very, very useful. And then we just set the player's map, the index, as the agent, and the player's map is the player's map, passing in the new custom player as the value of that indexed item in the map. Now you can't do this with an array because an array, the index is a number. It's an int zero, one, two, three, four, five, up to, I don't know what, a really big number. But this one, we use objects and they have to be unique. Otherwise we'll overwrite the value that is in here. And we, and remember, because players map is a variable, we have to call set to set a new value inside of that object. And then if this goes well, if everything goes fine, then we're going to say new custom player, initialize this player right there, and then we're going to pass in the unique user ID. And then right after that, we can go set unique user ID plus equals one. And that will allow the game to keep track of user IDs as people come in because we have it way up at the top here. It's just a just a value, just a number. So everybody gets a unique number. You can find this useful in the future. Uh, trust me, when we get into more advanced stuff, maybe, but this is the start. And that's how you sort that, that out. Okay, and then finally, when people leave the game, we want to be able to remove them from the map. Otherwise, we'll just have a runaway sort of memory issue if enough people come into our game. And so we have this get play space dot player removed event subscribe on player removed and this is very very common so then this on player removed function is just down here and we can see that we have a very simple function that is essentially going to be removing the player out of the map by making a new map and then we we pass in every value other than if it's the player that just left so the key in this case is the index and we're checking the key in the player's map so key to value, we want to know if the key does not equal the out player. If it doesn't, just put it in this temporary map because we're just we're just burning through the whole map like this. And then we set the player's map to this new map or this old one. And then that once this function finishes, this temp all players map just disappears. Mostly if you're beginning in this, I just say copy paste this, but it is important to understand the key value of a map and how to manipulate them. But this is the easiest way pretty much the only way to do this job. OK, so let's cover the custom player just a little bit more so we understand what's going on and why. So when a custom player is created, we're going to have a unique ID and the agent set when they are initialized. We've already covered that. Collected objects count is by default zero because we want to keep track of this when people collect stuff. So we've done the initialized player. We're going to call get collectible count every time we collect uh, an item and we can reset that every time we do a reset in the game and we can add a collectible when a collectible object is collected we just go plus one so collected objects count is this value here and we're going to plus equals one that so we're just going to add one to it it's a simple way to do that and then we're going to get that value when we call get collectible count for the player 
which is really, really powerful. Let's think about this. We are now keeping track of our player and what they're doing in the game. So remember back up here where we had the on collectible collected and we're passing in the agent and we're going into the player's map. We say, hey, does this player exist? Right, remember this now? And we're looking for the agent inside of the player's map. Now you guys should understand what I'm talking about. And we're gonna say, hey, player, add a collectible. So we just looked at that function. And then we're going to check to reset collectibles for this player. We're gonna pass in the custom player object, right? So that's here, check to reset collectibles, passing in the player, which is a custom player object. And we're gonna say, hey, what's the count for their collectible count? Do they have five, right? If count equals max collectibles, which is up above, we control click this, we can see here max collectibles is an int and it equals five. If it is five, then we're going to reset all collectibles and reset all collectibles respawns for all. As we covered previously, uh, we're going to just respawn them all and that brings back all of our collectibles. So you can see how useful it is to be able to keep track of players. And now we're gonna cover the usefulness of an array, a simple array. So remember back here, we've got all of our collectibles in this five lines. We've got all of our collectibles up here in these 10 lines, but we can actually solve this much easier with an array. Remember an array is just a simple list. So in our editables, we have collectible objects, collectible object device, it equals an array. So we can set that up inside of the game manager and it's just a nice tidy little array that gets closed up when we don't wanna look at it. Then instead of doing all of this here, so if we just comment these out with a hashtag, we can get rid of those and we open up this one. And we're going to do what is a very, very common thing with an array, which is to loop through them. So to do that, all we need is the collectible objects array name. And we go CO for collectible object. It's just what I've decided, colon, and then a colon at the end of all this. And this, what this will do is it will loop through the whole array one by one from start to finish. And we say CO collected event, subscribe on collectible collected to. I've just called it something else so they would run a different function. But this here is the exact same as all of this. So it's a very, very common way to use an array. And then down in here, we have the exact same functionality that runs inside of here because it is the exact same thing. And then instead of max collectibles, we could actually do one more thing, which is a very common usage of an array. And we're gonna grab this from control C and we're going to, instead of max collectibles, we're going to get the length of that array. And that array has five items in it. So if count equals the length of that array, then reset them all. So if you decide to put another 50 collectible items in here, you don't have to put these in, right? You don't have to put these in at all. You just add to the array in the editables and that will add collectibles and it will automatically run this when the item is collected, and it will automatically adjust what the count is for how many collectibles they should have before everything resets. And that makes it very, very useful. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense. We're gonna end this here. That's maps and arrays in what I believe is a very real scenario, in my opinion, in my experience. And if you guys have any questions, let me know anytime. And I will see you guys in the next one.